Welcome to the Native Diamond Podcast. Oh, shit! What you waiting for? What the fuck is up, everyone? Seth Mc here, back at it again with a new podcast episode. Okay, I am back. It's been a while, and not that I chose to take a long hiatus. It was just time for a vacation. Okay, me and my wife got away. We went to the fabulous, the tr- the dirty Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Okay. Uh, first off, not as scary as people, you know, say it is. And, you know, I can still see why a lot of families go there. Not shitting on it by any means. It was actually quite nice where we stayed at. Um, I saw a fuck ton of fireworks. It was, you know, 4th of July week. So, fireworks were plentiful, my friends. We saw a lot of those. And you know what? I hope you guys had an awesome holiday week, weekend, what have you. Hopefully you have your chance for R&R coming up soon. My friends, you all deserve it out there. We've all been working hard and, you know, working through these strange times. And, you know, that's my mushiness for the beginning of this podcast. Um, Good news, bad news time of the year for the podcast i guess i have to share this news i will not be doing as many interviews moving forward so if you you know have been listening for interviews i apologize it just doesn't make sense anymore you know like i put a lot of time into it um you know it takes a lot of hours and stuff like that per episode and you know just to get less than 50 views for an interview that takes a lot of time and planning and editing and stuff like that it just ends up being a lot of time with no returns so unfortunately i've tried to keep it up for a long time but i'm not saying i'll never do them again because i'd never say never but um i just can't do them all the time and it's just not feasible for me i'd rather pump out more reactions and you know content um you know on tiktok and stuff like that so you know i wanted to share that with you guys i'm working on getting a new patreon and i'm also working on a new podcast which has nothing to do with this but um it's it's more adjacent to my cook life so if you're a cook and you're listening uh i have some exciting stuff coming up here soon so anyway there it is spilled the beans but anyway (laughs) Uh, Let's get into this episode today because today, it's exciting, we're talking and hanging out with Scott Fisher, the drummer of Capstan, okay? We're going to talk a lot about their new album, Separate, which drops fucking Friday, July the 23rd, July 23rd, why did I say the whatever? Anyway, it drops and it's exciting as fuck. So before we get into this conversation... We're going to play some Capstan, and we're going to play specifically the song featuring Shane Told of Silverstein, and that song is called Alone, so we'll get into that. And stick around, because in the mid-roll, we're going to play a hidden gem, which is going to be some more Capstan, What you thought, What you thought, it's going to be Shades of Us. So stick around, hang out, uh, crack a cold one, slam a coffee, you know the usual, okay, Let's get into this episode. Thanks for tuning in.
What's up, everyone? Seth Mc here. This is Native Diamond Podcast. Thank you for tuning in, as always. And today, I'm hanging out with Scott Fisher, the drummer of Capstan. What's going on, dude? What's up? Good to be here. How you doing today? Pretty good, dude. Um, it is hot here in North Carolina, and I imagine it's even hotter in Florida where you are. <laughs> it, yeah, it's pretty. It's like it's brutally humid. Like right now, it's pouring rain, but uh, yeah, like. 15 minutes from now it'll be totally sunny and just like like you walk outside and you feel like you're swimming so not great <laughs> i feel that um are you from like orlando or are you guys like just based out of orlando uh we're all kind of like transplants from the midwest other than joe our guitar player mm -hmm. uh yeah we're all like me and a few members are from michigan uh but yeah we we've been in orlando like our whole time so yeah this is our home oh sick yeah. You still uh, consider Michigan home or? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, not like Orlando. Orlando is like home for me, but like oh, all my family's in Michigan, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel that. No, that makes sense. Um, I have a lot of family like in California. I live in North Carolina, as I mentioned, but I totally oh. get that. Sorry, man. My dog is barking. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Uh, my, my dog's right beside me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? I'm a boxer. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, do you mainly inside or outside? Keep him inside or outside? Oh, I keep him inside. Well, I mean, he goes out whenever he wants. But yeah, he's <laughs> inside. He's a, a spoiled dog. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. No, I, I love I love pets or whatever. I like oh, it. We yeah. have it. We have like four pets. So it's fucking crazy here all the time. <laughs> but <laughs> but anyway, um, so you guys are actually about to drop this new album, Separate. Um, that's right yeah so i know you don't want to drop any spoilers that's dropping later on next month or whatever but um this is your second album with fearless records like how stoked are you guys to still be on that record label we are absolutely elated to be on that label it is our has been our dream label since we have been you know listening to this kind of music mm -hmm. uh yeah, if if you would have asked us right when we started the band, which label would we want to get signed to, we would all be like, fearless. <laughs> so it just happened to work out that way. I feel that. How old are you, by the way? I'm 31. Okay, sick. I'm 30. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just turned 30. <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. then if you've been in the scene for like a while, you mm. like we probably grew up listening to the same stuff. Yeah, I, I think so. Like um, who, who like curates the whole... Um, I know you guys kind of make like a monthly playlist or something like that um, on your Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Like who do you guys all just kind of throw in some songs in a hat or. Yeah. Uh, we pretty much all pick five songs. Oh, sick. Okay. And we're just like, yeah, this is what we're listening to this month. <laughs> um, I want to ask you about those influences uh, just a little bit later, but um, do you want to play a quick game that we play on the show yeah, um, i, I want to see like where your head is at with certain um bands that are you know making moves right now so i'm gonna throw you in the hot round it's the hot let's seat. go i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> all right it works out best uh if you just say the first thing that comes to mind and then um you know we'll kind of discuss each uh answer so let's all right. get into it <laughs> the first one all right between you and me or trash boat oh trash boat they're my homies i love them so much that's sick and I noticed that you guys played together before. Um, so they're they're from the UK, correct? Yeah, yeah. All right. Say, so, uh, what was it like hanging out with those guys? Uh, we like we did warp tour with them, and we did a uh, a uh, uh, Europe tour with them, and they are just they're machines. They're just crazy. <laughs> like tons of fun. Always, you know, drinking beers together and just hanging out. They're like so down to earth. Like one of my favorite bands we've ever toured with for sure. Dope. That's awesome, dude. Um, yeah. Kind of like the time I found out about them, I found out about your band. Um, it was around, I guess, around 2016 ish. Oh, okay. Oh, Something that's like a lot. That. <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess, like, what was that like two album cycles back? Um, yeah. God, or maybe more than that. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of weird because, um, you know, you guys get referred to as like a newer band, but it feels like you guys have been, you know, doing it for a, a, quite a while. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's just we're we're like I, I feel like we're always just discovering like what we want to be, and that mm-hmm. makes us new to so many people because I feel like we're always like, oh, we're finally honing in on what we want, and then it's like, oh, well, it's different. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I feel that, um, but I mean, I like everything that I've heard so far, and. I feel like there's been uh, definitely like a progression or whatever, but thank I, you. Yeah. I think I so. love it though. It's good. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Um, all right. Next one real quick, bear tooth or sleep token. Oh, that's a hard one. I'm gonna have to go with sleep token. Uh, just, yeah, they're sleep token. Sick. Definitely. Uh, I, not that bear tooth isn't. I just mm-hmm. like what sleep token is doing is so unique. And like just cool, you know. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. it. No, that's true. And um I think I like the artistry with sleep token, like just the aesthetic and I don't know, just like all that stuff from like their last album cycle was like dropping a song at sundown at seven o'clock or whatever. Um, oh it's, it's awesome. And they have like all the symbolism like with the the fake religion thing. Yeah. Just it's genius. It's really cool. Like when I first heard about them, they were like maybe a couple singles into that release because they did like, you know, a single at a time until the full album was out. Yeah. Um, I heard them like for the first time, like a couple singles into that. And I was like, this is so crazy. Like, it's just <laughs> it feels like like Sam Smith, but with like eight string guitars. Like, it's sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is really sick um and i kind of like recently just found out about them so i just can't wait to see like what else they're gonna do moving forward for sure yeah they're i i think they're gonna get bigger and bigger because like i said i i feel like they have their concept their artistic concept just fleshed out so well like it's Mm -hmm. really cool yeah i could see like a tour like them spirit box and like loathe um yeah I could see that being a big deal or something. Yeah, I agree. All right. Um, next one. I don't know if you listen to these two, but we'll try it out. Hot Mulligan or State Champs? Ooh. Honestly, I, I, I think I, I like them both for totally different reasons. So I guess it just depends on my mood. Like, <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like Hot Mulligan and those guys are really cool too. The State Champs guys are really cool. Uh strictly music wise i'd say like state champs for the pop bangers and then for the emo the emo bops all hot mulligan (laughs) definitely (laughs) no that's so true and like i've been i've been kind of following state champs for a a minute like hot mulligan kind of slipped into them i don't know more recently i guess uh i was listening to like state of the scene podcast i don't know if you're familiar with that one yeah i know yeah yeah all right, so um, they they always like give a shout out to Hot Mulligan, and eventually I just like checked them out. I was like, who who is this band or whatever? But um, dude, they're fucking sick, and I like everything that they've put out. And I feel like their most recent stuff is probably like my my favorite stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, and that that's always like a good thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, like it's just it's always great. I feel like they have also just gotten better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for sure though. They're they're uh. They've been around for a minute too, um, mm-hmm. but they're, I mean, now they're bigger than ever. It's kind of funny because like, you know, bands, um, they'll change their sound or whatever. And then pe- like, as fans would say, but it's really, I feel like it's, they've got better at like songwriting and their song structures. They have more of a song structure, I guess. Yeah. And I don't know. I think maybe like people sort of like that looseness or something. Uh, what is like your take on that? Uh, no, I totally, I totally know what you mean. And honestly, I feel like, I feel like, um, the, like people like experimental music. Um, and it turned like, I feel like sometimes the goal isn't necessarily to be experimental. It's just like, maybe you you've gotten better at songwriting. So the older stuff seems more experimental, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like th- that mistake is made by people a lot. And it's just like, well, no, sometimes bands just get better at songwriting and that's the difference you're hearing. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like now those new, uh, well, even on their last record, those, some of those songs are like really well written. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's true. I don't know. That, that's just the way I feel about, uh, you know, just artists in general, like, like a day to remember or whatever, like their last album. Like I see nothing but people just like throwing shade on it. Like, cause I do reactions all the time for the podcast and I, like I was checking out chunks new, uh, it was like one of the new releases or whatever, but a lot of people were like throwing shade on your welcome in the comment section. And I was just like, you know, I, I don't know. Like it seems like when a band moves, grows and moves forward or whatever, obviously you have that, you know, reception of like either you hate it or love it, but it seems like a lot of fans are like hating it right now. Like all these changes, like asking Alexandria or bring me or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times, like those changes are just, the band wants to be more accessible to more people so they can like, I you want to do it for a living. So you, you can't just corner yourself out in a smaller market mm-hmm. without at least trying to like, I mean, think about what, uh, like, I mean, this was years ago now and I don't remember the name of the record, but what four year strong did, they did like a rock record mm-hmm. and it didn't do super well. And then they're like, okay, well, we'll just go back. And they went back to like the hard, the like tried and true, easy course type stuff mm-hmm. and like they're still huge yeah uh, it, it just you know i i think everyone gets a little uh everyone should be less harsh on bands for just <laughs> do, do what you want you know if it's not for you move along you know i feel that and i don't know about you but like i've noticed like as i've gotten older i do like kind of like a like a softer side of rock or whatever um i just like being able to sing along to some shit sometimes and um you know what people would call like butt rock or whatever i shamelessly listen to so i don't know if you have similar uh kind of thing going on but i, I don't I mean, have no shame here yeah i would say i would say like it i think i grew out of like just listening to heart like because i grew up in like death metal mm-hmm. and i grew out of like just listening to that pretty quick like it's just sometimes i don't want to hear blast beats at 240 bpm like you know, I just, <laughs> there's room for all you know you can listen to all types of stuff i feel that all right these next two are definitely all types of stuff uh dance gavin dance or bill murray oh damn i'm gonna have to go with bill murray just nice. because we toured with them and uh like seriously great people uh johnny is hilarious like i mean i'm sure you've seen his marketing and it's yeah. just like it's fucking or sorry it's no, you're good. i don't know if i can curse but yeah yeah, you can say whatever <laughs> okay yeah um yeah it's just sick like his, his branding and all of the, the art concept is so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's interesting so like um i feel kind of ignorant to this but does he have like solidified members now or like did he have just like a like touring members like how does how does that work um he has solidified members but i think anyway i'm pretty sure he has solidified members but it's just like his thing and he pays them you know mm-hmm. like uh i think i think i think that's how it is but like uh so in the same way that like like Beartooth is like a band, but Caleb writes everything. I right. think it's the same thing with Bill Murray. I don't totally know. I, yeah. but that's what I think anyway. No, I think I think I think so. I think I've heard that before. That's kind of interesting. That's kind of like what Prince was doing, I guess, or uh, I don't know. Just like that was the only comparison that came to mind, like real quick. But yeah, I, I think a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people work like that. You know, I, uh, but yeah, that's, I awesome. think I could be totally wrong though. I, I, and I'm sure like, cause yeah, I'm sure it's pretty, I'm sure it's collaborative as well, but mm-hmm. yeah, I know that he like directs all the art and like, like all the branding and all that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's sick. All right. These next two are definitely heavier and it's just two I've been listening to a lot of, but left to suffer or Lorna Shore. Ooh. Uh, honestly i'm not familiar with either one. <laughs> oh shit um so you need to check out the lorna shore their new song uh to the hellfire it's been like it's just been blowing up or whatever like i did a reaction to that and i've seen that their their views are just like insane 
And really? yeah, it's just ridiculous. Like he does this like snort. It sounds like this like hell bore um, thing. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It just sounds really insane. You need to check it out. Yeah, I, I will. Yeah. Lorna Shore. <laughs> yeah. Lorna Shore. Um, they just acquired a, a new vocalist or whatever, you know, they got rid of CJ and um, their new vocalist is Will Ramos. Yeah. I'm not- what- oh, you're good. Uh, well, I forgot what band he was in before, but you know, do you listen to a lot of death core? Do you, you keep up with that? genre uh, i'm not as much anymore i like i feel that I, I used to when i was younger but now i'm like i either I, it's god now it's just like either technical like prog or like pop at this yeah. point <laughs> i feel that all right sick um all right so last one i'll ask this is a little bit different but if there was an alternative music stock market who would you rather put stock in Youth Fountain or Driveways? I don't. I've never heard of Driveways, so I would say, uh, what you said, Youth Fountain. Yeah, yeah. I would say I'd go with Youth Fountain. That's sick. I, yeah, I don't. I but I, uh, I'm not. Su- yeah, I've just never heard of. I've never heard of Driveways. So yeah, I feel that. Uh, driveways is kind of like uh, pop punk, kind of easy ish but. Uh, they were on the podcast before. They're just uh, they're really interesting. They're like teachers and essentially just like have this band. And it's just kind of funny because it's blown up in a sense. And they're just like, all right, you know, they're yeah. just like, well, we're, you know, we're just Why teachers. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's sick, though. That's it really is sick. Cool. But anyway, uh, thanks for playing uh, my little goofy ass game. But <laughs> oh, on, man, thank you. Yeah. All right. Sick. It's time to take a uh... Time to take a break, okay? Let's get into it. Let's mosh. Let's have some fun. Let's play some more Capstan, okay? We're going to listen to the single Shades of Us coming off their new album, Separate, Witch Chops Friday, okay? Hope you guys are enjoying the episode. And, uh, you know, when we get back into the talking, the conversation, okay, um... Just the FYI, his power cut out, so that's what we're referring to. We had some technical difficulties, which is why I decided to put the commercial break in the middle of that so you don't have to hear it. So everything is just like normal, right? Let's get into it. Today's hidden gem is Shades of Us by Capstan. Let's play it right now. You're all I want, couldn't face it I wish you wouldn't let me go Your shades of blue left me painted Violet and indigo Drow color Lost illuminate Searching for my love when you discover things you hate And I acted like it's nothing Yeah, like everything was fine But it only takes a word from you to change my mind All I can recall still makes me slowly start to choke I know I should have listened but instead I only spoke I was the blind turn in your learning curve No one gets what they So close, I can't 
we're back. We're back. Yeah, I've had that shit happen before. I've had like um one time I was interviewing someone and a fly kept like landing specifically like right on the camera lens. And I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? Like it just kept <laughs> happening too. Wow. So that was funny. But anyway, um, I don't know if you remember the question I asked or whatever. But well, um, you had just started when my power went out. All right, no worries. All right, so I just wanted to know. I kind of want to. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna switch up the question because, like, I feel like with the change thing, it was just kind of too broad. But all right, so what changes can you see coming now, like coming out of like COVID? Even though like we're not totally out, but um, like what lessons do you think were learned um, in the music industry? Like, what do you think is gonna change like moving forward? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, really, like it's hard to see now. Um, and I mean, maybe I, this might not, I don't even think that this is a, uh, a byproduct of COVID so much as I feel like the music industry was already going this way, but uh, just single release over like uh, LP release. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like it was already going that way, but I feel like COVID really made people have to like, well, well, we can't play any shows. We can't tour on anything. So how do we keep engaged? Like, how do you stay engaged with your fans? Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like uh, after this, and like I said, I think the industry was already going this way, but more just singles. Yeah, that's so true. <clears throat> and I feel like they've kind of learned that from like just seeing all these hip hop releases and all these features. And um, I definitely heard, I definitely hear about this a lot in like different podcasts that, you know, they're starting to be more aware of that kind of thing. I think that's smart. And um, also think that like, um, you know, with new signings and stuff like that, um, I heard somebody had an interesting deal. I don't know if you guys do, but like they're like on a, like a total song uh, deal where it's like you guys can make it into three albums if you want, or you can make like five EPs, but you know, you need to come up with like X amount of songs in total. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, that's not what our deal is like, but right. that makes sense. Like if you're going like that makes sense. And honestly, like that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be sick. Cause um, I don't know. I, I actually kind of like um, multiple, like, eps like when they're not so spread out like i remember um when the devil wars prada was like putting out like they put out like zombies one or whatever and then they put out space ep i don't know i just thought that was really exciting um because you saw more uh less you know more often right yeah and uh, like a lot of times you would just record everything in this at the same time um and I, it's a cool way to release music it really is so, I, and I mean, like we were talking about Sleep Token, not that I think that they recorded all of it at one time, but they had like the whole record was just singles and they, it was released over like the course of a year. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. That is cool. Um, well, I mean, speaking of that, so like, you know, with Separate about to drop and everything, um, you know, is there anything special that maybe you can... Uh, maybe share about the release um i don't even know what would be considered special uh <laughs> um are you guys doing any special releases like any shows or oh yeah there there are some like special release things coming up i can't talk about them yet gotcha <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do have some like really fun type stuff that we're going to be promoting with. Uh, and then obviously we do have more singles coming. So that's always exciting. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so I listened to the podcast where, um, you know, Anthony was on with, uh, sorry, Shane told the Silverstein. Oh uh, yeah. Point right there. But um, so anyway, you know, in that one, I kind of got to learn about, um, basically how the band started and uh, that the nature of, you know, the conception or whatever. 
So one thing I didn't really get to here, because I don't want to like just badger you with like the same questions over and over, you oh, know, that's like What's up? That, that we heard. But like, I want to know your influences. Like, I know you can speak on your behalf, but um, if you know any like band members in particular, you know. I feel like it, it comes from just everyone being so having such diverse, like we all love totally different things and like like obviously we all grew up listening to like post hardcore like you know silver scene and all those bands from like the early mid 2000s we all grew up listening to that but i mean now we're all like joe and i come we come from like a metal background so like our some of our favorite bands are like mashuga and like between the buried and me is like one of our favorite bands nice and then like I love like the 1975 and like pop music like that. And then, you know, Harry and Boz and Anthony all love like, they all come from like a pop punk background. Um, So yeah, it's all just, I think it all was just like, well, we all know that we love music, but let's just get together and see what happens. And less about, you know, what we want to sound like. It's just, this is what we're going to make and it's going to come out however it comes out. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like that maybe not the best approach, but <laughs> it, it works for us. So whatever. No, that's cool. And I've, I've heard that mentioned too. Like, you know, obviously there's not, there's not a discussion of like, you know, you guys are like, all right, we're going to sound post hardcore this year, or, you know, this year we're going to sound pop punk or whatever. Right. Um, you know, it, it does feel natural and it does feel like, you know, you guys just do what you want to do that day in particular. Yeah. And th- that's what it is. I mean, like uh, maybe on separate, we, on, well, not maybe uh, certainly on separate, we dedicated more time to just like, what do we want these songs to be? Cause I, I feel like uh, on like restless heart and the EPs before that, we're all just like, okay, let's just write this. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, but yeah, th- I, I, I'm certainly sure that we spent a lot more time discussing, like, what do we actually want these songs to be on this one, the next record? That's interesting. Um, so, like, what kind of inspired you guys this time around with this album? Or what feels different about this album in particular? Um, this record's just a bit darker than everything we've ever done um it's certainly heavier well we started using seven strings in this on this record Mm -hmm. um and then we're more more so uh like chorus driven so we were trying to fit in more choruses Mm -hmm. uh just so you have the like the repeated repeated melody um but yeah this one this record was uh really fueled by joe joe's going through some like oh, sorry Hold on. Hold on. a few moments later so uh sorry to get back to what we were talking about yeah um yeah so joe joe really was going through a hard a really hard point of his life um and just with you know covid and struggling with depression himself and uh he kind of just locked himself up and banged it out like i don't even understand how he did it but mm-hmm. he like contributed on this record and uh yeah it was it, it's mostly coming from like joe's struggles well the lyrical context anyway mm-hmm. wow that's interesting and i saw that like on his instagram so like he's um like the main songwriter or how does that like work amongst like the songwriting process um uh, certainly on this newer one. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Joe, he like, he's really come out as a songwriter and like, um, yeah, he writes so much. Um, yeah. So we, we all like what, how we how the process really was on this record was like, Joe was writing so much by himself and then we'd all get together for about 40 hours a week mm-hmm. and like talk about structures and then writing melodies and like, rearranging stuff uh but yeah the ideas on this one came from joe that's sick dude yeah um so like i my bad i was trying to like find how i phrased it but like 
I found out you, about you guys like on the last warp tour, uh, like uh, cross country tour. I can't fucking yeah. talk. I'm like looking at the word, but I can't say it. Um, so what was that like? Was that the first time that you guys got on warp tour or were you guys yeah. on uh, before that? That was the first time I'm on like the full, like, like with not just playing one date. Okay. That was like our first time playing and like being a band on warp tour. Mm-hmm. Um, it was so sick. I wish it could come back so I could do it again. Right. But yeah, it was really, really cool. That's interesting. Um, you guys came through Charlotte, right? Yeah. It poured that day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I did see you guys then. I was just like, um, cause that's when I found out about your band. Okay. And like for a little bit, like no offense, but I, I had confused you and do you capsize, you know, capsize. I do. I remember that. I don't <laughs> hey. think they're a band anymore, but yeah. Yeah. I don't think so either. But, um, I had you guys confused for like a second just cause like the cap thing. Yeah. But, um, it's the same four letter first four letters or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, um, no, but you guys totally sound different, but, um, yeah, I heard you guys like not from afar, but you know, we were chilling that, you know how it goes. Like you're just, sometimes you're just, sitting and chilling in the shade and just trying not to die and yep. um, so we were kind of watching you guys from a distance but um no that i've been kind of trying to follow you like you know low-key just watching the releases and i always enjoy what i've heard like you guys seem like you don't miss uh with with albums and singles um you guys have definitely been growing mm-hmm. for sure have Thank you, you yeah were you guys like a four piece before or am I imagining things? Uh, not then we were kind of a four piece before, but not, not, no, no, I wouldn't ever say we were a four piece actually. Not, it was like non canonical times. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We've always been a five piece. That's awesome. Um, but you guys did like have like a lineup switch up, right? Yes, uh, that was uh, in 2015-ish, I guess. Uh, yeah, it was just because we were kind of going to transition from doing like pop punk, mm-hmm. like mainly pop punk music to like uh, like a darker post-hardcore sound. Okay. And uh, yeah, and Joe, Joe was playing bass and Boz was on guitar. And obviously Joe is like an incredible guitar player, so... <laughs> Um, yeah. So then Harry moved to rhythm guitar, Joe moved from bass to lead, and then Boz moved from rhythm to bass. That's interesting. But Boz, like, what was so confusing about the whole thing was that Boz is a bass player. Like, Mm -hmm. his first instrument is bass. It (laughs) just so happened that all the roles were switched around. Okay. That's really cool. And he does, like, some secondary, like, vocals too, right? Yeah, he does. Like, uh, he does. He has his own lead parts and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I love seeing that kind of stuff because it's like interesting. You're like, how do they pull that shit off live or whatever? And um, you guys definitely do that shit. It's crazy. Oh, thanks, man. I we practice a decent amount with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much time have you been devoting to towards like practicing now as a band? Um, well, not as much right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Well. I think it was, uh, I mean, we haven't in the past few weeks because we've all been like really busy, but there was a minute there while we were preparing for some stuff coming up, we were like practicing a lot. And then obviously before we went to record the record and that was in December, we Mm -hmm. were like on a constant grind of like, I need to learn how to make sure I can play these songs, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Which is always very stressful for me. (laughs) It's really (laughs) terrifying. Because, like, you, you always commit to, like, oh, I'm writing it this way, so I'm going to have to play it that way. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, what if you can't, you know, so it's really <laughs> stressful. <laughs> Do you have to, like, uh, play the song back to remember, like, how you played it and shit? No. So the way we write is, like, we write everything on Guitar Pro. Okay. So everything is done on, like, on the staff. Oh, okay. Them, at least. And then, yeah. So, so like... I can write it down note for note and then I can always like reference it. Mm -hmm. But some stuff is just like, like I've written it and it's like not possible for me to play it. (laughs) I'm like, uh, yeah. And then I'll have to like change it. It's really stressful. (laughs) Yeah. 
that seems stressful. Um, so, sorry, do you get tracked first? Like, how does that work? Like, I've always kind of wondered, like, modern day tracking and shit. Do you, like, do you go first now or, like, who goes Honestly, first? Honestly, it, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, okay. well, it, it doesn't matter if you're recording, like, to a grid. All right. Which we do. So, like, I think I've recorded drums last. Okay. Uh, on our last, this record and our last one. Drums were all last. Okay. And then kind of vocals were throughout the entire time because you don't want to blow out, like, the vocalist at all. That makes sense. Um, so, yeah, like, but if you're recording to a grid, it does not matter, mm-hmm. like, who records first or whatever. It's interesting. I, I just like heard that before in like little documentaries and shit. Like they were, I think it was like Suicide Silence or some shit. But they were talking about how they track drums first, and I'm sure every band does it different. So that that was like that's the normal. I would say is like that drums are first. Mm-hmm. Um, but n- now it like doesn't matter as much just because. And I think a lot of those Suicide Silence like albums. I mean, I correct me if I'm wrong. I was listening to like the cleansing a little while ago. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Sick. And it was like I was noticing like these songs, none of them are gridded. Like it's all just like, <laughs> all the tempos are all just like all over the place, which is yeah. cool. It's the vibe of the record. <laughs> but the the only way you could ever do that is if you had drums go first, right? Yeah. So, um, that, that's so funny. Does it drive you like kind of crazy now that like when you listen to music, you're just like kind of not like tear it apart but you you notice little nuances and stuff oh yeah i mean that it comes with the territory if you like spend so much time doing one thing mm-hmm. you pick up on the smallest bits of it like pretty clearly mm-hmm. um and yeah I, and i hadn't listened to that record in like you know a decade or something <laughs> and then like i go back to it i'm like what is going on here you know like <laughs> <laughs> that's funny and like that's funny because like that wasn't really that long ago and look how much like metal has changed you know oh yeah and that was like they were huge yeah they were were, like the biggest metal band at that time Uh, yeah i would say so for sure yeah it's wild and yeah so it's just always always changing it's always changing now that you mentioned that um i want to ask this question but like who do you think is the biggest metal band right now Um, 2021 like you mean like straight up just screaming vocals kind of stuff um i don't know i guess like wh- like who do you see leading the pack um you know kind of how we mentioned suicide silence like uh, oh like that so in that kind of obvious i guess oh god honestly i don't think i'm qualified to answer because i don't <laughs> know like i don't i didn't even know about lorna shore just a little right. bit so, like what i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't even know Maybe it is. Maybe it's Lauren Ashore. I don't know. I'm telling you that that new song really did something. Uh, I just I've been seeing it everywhere, like all these like reactions and shit. And I'm sure I've seen it, too. And like, I just haven't noticed it because no one's ever said mm-hmm. it to me. So like, <laughs> like, I'll probably see it all the time now. That's funny. All right. So since we're talking about that and we're starting to get uh, towards like an hour mark, but um I want to ask what what are you listening to lately or whatever. So like, do you have Spotify or? Yeah, I use Spotify. Okay. Um, um, do you have your phone handy? Maybe. I do. Yeah. All right. Well, if you don't mind, you look up your on repeat playlist. Lately, okay. So I've been listening to. I don't know if you watched it, but the the Bo Burnham special. Have you watched that? I haven't seen it yet. No. Dude, it's absolutely incredible. Like, and he, like, I was. I didn't even know about Bo Burnham until the new special. But yeah, I was like totally floored by him because like he's an excellent is also it's like funny and like heavy, but the songs are also like really good, which is strange. <laughs> but uh here, yeah, so that's been on repeat. Wait, let me pull up that. My top songs of 2020 are all like like the 1975 Phoebe Bridgers, um Seaway. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Protest the Hero, uh, Volumes, Nice, Broadside, yeah, just like you know, Bad Books. Have you ever listened to Bad Books? They're sick. No, I haven't actually. I'm going to check them out. It's like, uh, you know Kevin Devine and you know Manchester Orchestra? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, it's just their side project or whatever. But um, huh. yeah, 
And I mean, yeah, that was just like 2020. I can't find my <laughs> new one. They're always changing. Like, I don't know where anything is. Uh, <laughs> no, that's sick. I've heard of uh, also like Phoebe Bridgers. Is that her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, I've I've heard like her mentioned or whatever on a couple podcasts. I should check her out by now. Is she like all oh, or, yeah, like scene adjacent or like what is? She's bigger than the scene now. Oh, like, she's she's like... she's like she got nominated for a Grammy. She might have won actually. I don't oh, totally know, but I feel like yeah, so she's really good. That. She's really good for sure. Um, it's just like mellow indie music, but it, mm-hmm. it's cool. Um, and I, I've also been listening to um, Sleep Token, like we were talking about. Uh, have you listened uh, Holding Absence? I've been listening to. Oh yeah, for um, sure. They're sick. I'm listening to the Japanese House, and like yeah, the Japanese House. And have you ever heard of Thundercat? I've been listening to Thundercat a lot too. Okay, what is um what is Thundercat like? It's like um, like jazz, hip hop, kind of stuff. It's oh, really, nice. really cool. He just won a Grammy as well. Yeah, it's really sick. <laughs> nice. You're definitely putting me on. That's awesome. I'm gonna check yeah. It's out all also. It's, it's totally like outside of our scene, but yeah, it's all. I mean, cool that's stuff. cool. I mean, that's fine with me. I, it's funny because like the more uh, people I talk to, the more I realize that like no one really listens to like this type of music that makes this type of music, which is really interesting. Oh (laughs) yeah. It's really, isn't it? I, I I feel like I've I've noticed that too. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is, but I I just feel like it is just the case. So weird. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Cause like, I guess in a way you're trying not to like rip someone off, Um, you know, cause like just by hearing it, you can kind of pick up on that or like, you'll kind of mimic it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it... I don't know. I mean, I think there's room for all. And it's not that I don't, like, listen to... I mean, I still listen to that kind of music. It's just... It's not what I listen to a lot. Like, what I listen to a lot is totally whatever. I feel that. Um, Here lately, I've been, like, listening to, like, older, like, rock, I guess. Like, not older rock, but, like, stuff that you, you would consider butt rock. Or like new metal. Um, I've been kind of just like listening to like 2000s, you know, 90s kind of stuff. Uh, not not like recently, but like I made this playlist and I've just been playing back like what got me into this type of music, I guess. So yeah, like that's yeah. just been kind of fun, like just to just hear all that nostalgic stuff. Oh, it's sick, man. I, I love listening to the old bangers. I know, right? Because like all I, all I listen to really is like a bunch of newer like releases because I'm always checking out some bands that are getting sent to me or emailed or whatever. So um, here lately I've been listening of to, course, yeah. Uh, yeah. But here lately I've been listening to the new Bear Tooth uh, Below album. And like yeah, we mentioned Sleep Token. Um, have you heard the new Spirit Box ma- mash up with um, Courtney Plant or the Courtney Plant with uh, Make Them Suffer? Sorry. Oh no, I have not heard that. No. Okay. Uh, they have a new song called like contraband it's like super sick oh sick i'll check it out yeah um also do you listen to rap any not a ton but uh yeah not a ton but a little bit okay um i like like tyler the creator a a lot like he's just like my favorite rapper i just like that whole like that that weird scene shit that he was doing back in the day and um, he also uh, signed Odd Future signed Trash Talk or whatever like a long time ago. Oh, true. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> uh, but anyway, like Tyler, Tyler, the creator, put out a new album, "Call Me If You Get Lost," and I've been listening to that. And then lastly, um, Wrist meets Razor, their new album is like super sick. Oh, really? Yeah. If yeah, you like, I, to, I haven't listened to any of them. Um, if you like, especially if you like post hardcore, man, uh, their new album "Replica of a Strange Love." Um, yeah, Wrist Meat Razor is a sick band that you should definitely check out. You'll like them a lot. Well, yeah, dude, I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, but anyway, dude, I just want to say thank you so much for you know doing this podcast. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I want to, I want to respect your time today, and um, let you get back <laughs> to what you got going on, but um thanks again but is there anything that you want to say before you head out like any anything that you want to leave behind to the viewers listeners 
Uh, if uh, they want to check out the new Capstan and pre-order the record, it's out July 23rd on Fearless Records. It's called Separate. Nice. <laughs> well, dude, thank you so much for being on the show. We're going to head out of here. So goodbye, thank everyone. <laughs> that pretty much does it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. All my friends out there and everyone that has supported me, I just personally want to say thank you so much. It really does mean a lot. But yeah, like I said, the interviews are going to be few and far between. But I will be doing a lot of reaction reviews. I know you guys love those. And that way I get to cover a lot more music and get to listen to a lot more music. So that is something I really enjoy. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I can turn those around a lot faster and... I can just put out more of this stuff, right? More stuff. More stuff coming uh, in 2022, I guess. Because this year is, well, halfway over. Which is fucking crazy. It's flying by. Um, big thanks to you guys out there. Follow us on socials, okay? At Native DMND. And, you know, that's, that's basically where I'm at. All right? Thank you guys. Peace and love. Shine on. Shine on. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah.